Now let's talk about the second special topic of today. That's the heterogeneous causal effect. So far for the past few weeks in our causal model, we have assumed that Y responds to the change of X in the same way for everyone. We have been assuming that the causal effect is homogeneous for everyone in the sample or in the population. The homogeneous effect assumption is actually very commonly made um, even in serious contemporary research. However, if you think about it, even for a few seconds, you realize it's not a very realistic assumption. People are different. Re they respond to treatment in different ways. For example, um, one cup of coffee will make me lie awake all night. However, my friend Rachel can drink a gallon of coffee a day without any ill effect. So clearly coffee has different effect on us. Or you can imagine another very realistic scenario, Bob and Joe both finished a coding class in a community college. Bob went on becoming a programmer and Joe decided coding was not for him. So coding made Bob the coding the, the coding class uh, changed the career path for Bob, but didn't have that same effect on Joe. So it's not hard at all to imagine heterogeneous causal effect. Um, the only reason that people make homogeneous causal effect assumption is for simplicity. Um, let's see how heterogeneous causal effect makes problems more complicated and how we can solve some of the complications. So in econometrics, we can make the heterogeneous in causal effect in uh, explicit in the following way. So we can use mathematics to model heterogeneous causal effect in the following way. So we write down our causal model just as before, but now let's use a beta one tilde instead of beta one to stand for the causal effect of X on Y. Adding a tilde of course doesn't do anything unless we give a meaning, give a different meaning to this quantity, to this simple. Now the different meaning that we give it is that this now stands for a random variable. We let this coefficient beta one tilde be a random variable. It is a random variable. It can take different values for different people. And that stands for different effect of X on Y for different people. Everything else stays the same. So beta uh, zero is still a constant, um, a non-random constant intercept. Y is still the dependent variable. X is still the causal variable, the variable whose causal effect on Y we are interested in. And U is still the summary of other factors participating in the generation of uh, Y. Generating Y, not U. It is the um, easiest to understand this notation in the potential outcome framework. Uh, remember that we talked about two ways to set up a causal model to tell a causal story. The second way is the potential outcome framework uh, with the binary treatment X. In the potential outcome framework, Y equals y1 times x plus one minus x times y0, where y1 is the potential treated outcome and y0 is the potential untreated outcome. And we 
we're able to write this in terms of this uh, simple linear causal model by calling y1 minus y0 beta 1 and calling y0 beta 0 plus u, right? So that's what we did. But previously, we made the simplifying assumption that y1 minus y0 is constant. So previously we assumed that this treatment effect y1 minus y0 to be a constant, a non-random number. Now let's not make that assumption, right? Let's not make that assumption. We allow now y, uh, y1 minus y0 to be random and call that beta one tilde. We now call that treatment effect beta one tilde and allow it to be random, meaning that we allow it to be different for different people in the population, just as X is different for different people in the population or as Y being different for different people in the population. Suppose that we still run an OLS regression of Y on X and we let beta one hat denote the OLS slope coefficient, the OLS um, coefficient on X. Does beta one hat consistently estimate something of interest? Suppose that X is randomly assigned. Let's make the simplest assumption possible. X is randomly assigned in a randomized control trial. Then because of that, X is independent of both the heterogeneous treatment effects, beta one tilde and U, right? In the potential outcome framework, U is basically Y zero. It's Y zero minus the expectation of Y zero, but the randomness of it is the randomness in Y zero. In beta one tilde is the potential treated outcome minus the potential untreated outcome. Y1 and Y0 are the potential outcomes, what could happen with or without the treatment. So both are actually something that were already determined before the treatment. So both treated and untreated outcomes are pre-treatment variables because they were determined, even though not realized, but determined, what's um, determined nonetheless determined before the treatment was given. So they are both pre-treatment treatment variables and X is the treatment that's assigned randomly from any pre-treatment variable. So X is independent from both. So X is independent from both these uh, beta one tilde, which we sometimes also call random coefficient and the error term u. So x is both in, independent of both the random coefficient and u. And suppose that is the case, then what does OLS of y on x estimate consistently? To see what it does, we can take the conditional mean and see what the conditional mean model looks like, because we know the OLS will consistently estimate the conditional mean model when the conditional mean model is linear. And let's see what the conditional mean is. Remember that this causal model is beta zero plus beta one total x one x plus u. Now let's just take the conditional mean of y given x that will be the conditional mean of beta zero plus beta one total X plus U given X. So conditional expectation satisfy the linearity 
So conditional expectation of the sum equals the sum of the conditional expectation. So this equals conditional expectation of beta zero, which is beta zero itself, plus conditional expectation of beta one tilde x given x, plus eu given x. Now, because we are taking this expectation given x, x can come out of the conditional expectation. x is uh, non-random given x. So that becomes e beta one tilde given x times x plus e u given x. Now recall because x is randomly assigned. So x is independent of u and x is independent of this random coefficient. If x is independent of the random coefficient, then the conditional expectation equals the unconditional expectation. So that equals the unconditional expectation plus the unconditional expectation of u. So this is by random assignment. Of x, right, by random assignment of x, these conditional expectations equal unconditional expectation. And EU, we have normalized to zero, so that drops out. So this conditional expectation is beta zero plus E beta one tilde times X. This in fact is a linear function of X. That's linearity is not a problem. So therefore OLS of Y on X does estimate the coefficients in this model consistently. So beta one hat, the OLS slope coefficient converges in probability to this x coefficient in the conditional mean model, which is E beta one tilde. So we do have this. So that's what we got. Um, we got this conditional mean model um, and beta one hand converges in probability to this x expectation of the random coefficient. If we call this random expectation of the random coefficient beta one bar, so beta one hat does converge in probability to beta one bar. The OLS slope coefficient consistently estimate the expectation of the random treatment effects. Or in other words, that is the average effect, average over the whole population. So population average of the effect of one unit change of X on Y. So maybe coffee has a different effect on me than on Rachel, but if we take the whole population and average up the coffee effect on every one of us, then that will be the average effect of coffee. And that quantity is called the average treatment effect. It's got an abbreviation that you may see in a lot of papers that's called ATE. So that's the average treatment effect. So even though you cannot estimate the treatment effect for every individual, it looks like you can estimate the average treatment effect across the population by simply running OLS of Y on X. That's nice. If you have random assignment, OLS is still a good tool because it estimates the average treatment effect consistently.
So our previous estimators in the randomized control trial situation is still estimating something meaningful. It estimates the ATE. However, this is not so simple in more general situations. Let's consider a more general situation that's with additional covariates. We talked about two reasons that we want to include additional covariates, even if our um, parameter of interest is the causal effect of only one variable. One reason is it's possible that the causal variable is not randomly assigned, but only conditionally randomly assigned given a vector of control variables. Then clearly we will want to include those control variables in order to get a consistent estimator for the causal effect of interest. Another reason is, um, so maybe X is randomly assigned, but there are some other pre-treatment variables that are also uh, observed. Uh, we may want to include those pre-treatment variables W in the OLS regression, not to gain consistency because we have consistency without them, but to gain more precision, to get a better estimator. So we had two reasons to, may, to maybe include additional covariates um, in the constant treatment effect case, right? So that is, uh, there are two reasons to run this long regression with X and a bunch of additional covariates, uh, even if we are only interested in the causal effect of X, right? So, two situations, as I said, one situation is when both random assignment and conditional random assignment hold, we want to include the W variables to improve precision. The second situation is when random assignment doesn't hold, but conditional random assignment hold, we use the W variables as control variables. These W variables are included as control variables so that we can get a consistent estimator for the constant treatment effect. So those are arguments that we use in the constant or homogeneous treatment effect case. What happens if we do the same thing in the situation where the treatment effect is not constant, but instead is random? If we do the same thing, in that case, let's suppose that conditional random assignment holds, okay? Suppose that conditional random assignment holds, that is E beta tilde given X W equals E beta tilde given W. So X is no longer relevant once we condition on W. X is no longer um, correlated with the beta one tilde, the random coefficients, once we condition on W. And also X is no longer correlated with U once we condition on W. Let's suppose conditional random assignment hold. And we run OLS regression of Y on X and W. Let beta one M denote the slope coefficient on X from this OLS regression. The question we want to answer is, does this estimator consistently estimate, does it converge to the average treatment effect? That is the expectation of this random coefficient. In general, the answer is no. In general, it doesn't estimate the average treatment effect consistently. Um, this is, the answer is no, even if X is also not only conditionally randomly assigned, but also randomly assigned. Even if E beta one tilde given X equals the average treatment effect and EU given X equals zero, even if X is both randomly assigned and conditionally randomly, 
conditionally randomly assigned. Uh, our the, the OLS regression of Y on X and W that we used before to estimate the constant treatment effect no longer estimate the average treatment effect consistently. So to see why, we can start with the linear causal model and take the conditional expectation given X and W. The reason we always do that is um, the OLS is that we know the OLS consistently estimate the conditional mean model when the conditional mean is linear. We want to figure out what the condition, the coefficients in the conditional mean model is and see whether they are the same as the parameters we are interested in. Okay, so that's the logic. So now let's try to figure out this conditional mean model. And we do our calculation just as usual. So that conditional mean equals beta zero plus E of beta one tilde given X W times X plus E U given X W. And because we assume conditional random assignment, so that is beta zero plus E beta one tilde W X plus E U given W. Okay. And that is what we got here. Now, notice here, this is not a linear function of X because the coefficient here on X is not a constant. This is not a constant. It is a function of W. So we can split this random variable into the expectation of it, expectation of it is the ATE and the difference between this random variable and the ATE. So we can write the right hand side as beta zero plus the ATE times X plus EU given W plus this difference times X. Once we write it this way, let's call this thing G of beta, okay? So we call this thing G of beta W. So that is, remember is E of beta one tilde given W minus E of beta one tilde. Now let's make the simplifying assumption that EU given W is linear. That's a simplifying assumption. You can assume this contain, you can alternatively assume that this contains some nonlinear terms of W and so on. But for, for our purpose, it's enough to assume this is linear. Then EY given XW becomes this intercept plus ATE times X plus gamma one times W plus this annoying term that contains both W and X. And because of this nonlinear annoying term, OLS of Y on X and W will not consistently estimate the ATE because that um, is estimating, because that OLS is trying to estimate uh, a model, a conditional mean model that misses this nonlinear term. And that is incorrect because the conditional mean actually has this nonlinear term in it. Okay, so 
the OLS regression of Y on X and W. Um, give us this estimator for E beta one tilde, but it's not a consistent estimator because it misses this nonlinear term that should be there. Okay, so beta one had M doesn't convert to the ATE. So it's not consistent for the ATE. And as you can see, the to got here, we used conditional random assignment. As you can see, the random assignment assumption doesn't help. Even if you assume Even if we assume that X is randomly assigned, that is E beta one tilde given X is the ATE and E U given X is zero. Even if we assume this, it does not make G beta W disappear. It doesn't because G of beta W is E beta one tilde given W minus the ATE. And E of beta one tilde given W is not made a constant by either the conditional random assignment or the random assignment assumption. So what this is, is how the treatment effect varies with W. And W remember is not randomly assigned. W is the pre-treatment variables, the individual characteristics. They may, be very well correlated with the treatment effect. And the random assignment of X does not help with that. So therefore, um, even with complete random assignment, even with the ideal RCT, uh, we cannot say that this beta one hat M converts to the ATE. So that's the difficulty. Um, but as you can see, there is actually a solution that's quite apparent from this equation. So what's the solution? The solution is quite apparent from this solution because that's because this is a function of W. And we can make a linearity assumption on that function of W. Let's say it is delta zero plus delta one prime W for some constants delta zero and delta ones. If we make this assumption, then this conditional mean model becomes one with a linear term of X, a linear term of W, as well as an interaction term of X and W. Now notice both delta zero and delta one are coefficients in this linear and coefficient conditional mean model. And this conditional mean model can be estimated consistently by OLS of Y on X, W, and the inter interaction term. So, if you run OLS regression of Y on X, W, and the interaction term, then the coefficients on X, coefficient on the interaction, will provide consistent estimator for delta zero and delta one consistently, um, respectively. And once you have delta zero and delta one, once you have consistent estimator for delta one and delta zero, you can estimate the ATE. Why? Because the ATE equals delta zero plus delta one prime expectation of W. 
and expectation of W can be estimated by the sample average of W consistently. So when you put the OLS estimators for delta zero and delta one together with this sample average of W, that provides a consistent estimator for the ATE. Right, so this converges in probability to delta zero plus delta one hat from plus delta one E of W by the Slutsky's theorem. So that's quite nice. And not only that, better yet, you not only can estimate the ATE, you can actually consistently estimate the treatment effect for subgroups of the population. You can estimate like the treatment effect of say women, if W contains the gender variable or the treatment effect for 20 year old women, if W contains age and gender, right? So that is a very good way to visualize the heterogeneity of treatment effect among individuals. So with this uh, simple OLS regression, including the interaction term, you can estimate um, the treatment effect the heterogeneous treatment effect uh, for different subgroups of the population, which is quite nice. Um, here, I want to talk about a specific detail. That is, when you uh, want to estimate the heterogeneous treatment effect, okay, say for a particular W value, um, you want to include the interaction term but at the same time, you also want to include the W term. The W term is needs to be included uh, because if that is omitted, then if that is omitted, then this conditional mean model with that omitted is misspecified. So that term got into the error term and become correlated with what's included and you wouldn't be able to estimate delta zero and delta one consistently. So that's why when you include the interaction term to capture the heterogeneous treatment effect, you also want to include the main terms of W, okay? Um, another little trick I want to talk about is suppose Uh, suppose we want to estimate the treatment effect for the subgroup of people with W equals a particular W0 value. Suppose that this W0 value is of particular interest. Let's say that uh, 25 year old women, okay? And we want to know the treatment effect for that group of people, the average treatment effect for that group of people. So we are, suppose we are interested in this thing for a particular W0 value. And how do we run our OLS regression so that this becomes a single coefficient of a random variable? I'm going to argue that we can figure that out by rewriting this conditional mean equation. Remember this conditional mean equation is this. So this conditional mean equation is this, is um, um, so this beta zero plus gamma zero intercept 
plus uh, delta zero x plus delta one interaction plus gamma one w vector. Now, if you just run OLS of y on x interaction and w, then this quantity doesn't appear as a single coefficient, but instead as a combination of these two coefficients. However, if you do this very uh, straightforward manipulation, if you do this, you just subtract delta one prime W zero from this coefficient here, then you're gonna need to add it back later on, right? So you add that back. Oh, not subtract, I'm sorry. So you want to add it, but then you need to subtract it also to maintain the equation. Right? Now you look at these two terms, you can actually factor out the delta one and the x. And what's left is w minus w zero. Right, so you can do that. So that becomes W minus W zero times X. So what this suggests is that you can run an OLS regression of Y on X, this interaction and W then the coefficient on x is the quantity that you are interested in. So that means we can run OLS of regression of y on x and w minus w zero times x and W. That is, you can simply modify the interaction term in this way so that the coefficient on X becomes this parameter of interest. All right, so that's it for heterogeneous treatment effect.